It's not very often that something that I work on comes back to me, but then again, who's got the time to do any kind of maintenance on their mower? This mower finally came back, and this time, it's not good. It's a little beat up, and it certainly doesn't look like what it did when I gave it back to them. But then again, what did you expect? Don't worry, it's not completely broken, but what happened to it was certainly one of the strangest issues I've seen all year. In today's video, we're going to be looking at this Honda lawnmower, and the problem is that it starts, but immediately stops. And when I say immediately, it barely runs for a couple of seconds. The strange part is that the problem has progressed slightly from what the initial complaint was, which was that it started and ran, but when turning on the blades, it would then stop. Now, I'm going to try and repair this mower, but yours might be different, so this might not work on yours. So if things are not working out for you, like in the video, please ask about it. I'll be glad to answer your questions. When I first got the call for this mower, I was told that it had bit the dust, which are pretty strong words when talking about a lawnmower. So I was hopeful they were exaggerating because with Honda leaving the market, getting a replacement mower was going to mean getting a battery mower, which is something no one wants. So here's the situation. I had done an inspection on this very mower only three or four months ago, and it seemed to be working well back then. So what could have happened in only a couple of months to change all that and make this basically a boat anchor? And as you can see, the air filter is in really good condition, so I can't see where things have gone wrong, at least not yet. Now, the most likely cause for a running issue, like what my friend was describing, would be something wrong with the gasoline in the tank. And more than likely, there could be a small amount of water in it that's made its way to the carb, and that's the reason why it's acting the way that it is. That means we'll have to drain the gasoline from at least the carb bowl and find out if there's any water in it. There's no real point in draining the gasoline from the fuel tank because with the carb being at the lowest point, most of it would have made its way to the carb by now. Now, they did tell me they added a bit of oil to the engine, but they only did it because it was low on the dipstick and not that it was empty. At this point, the only thing left to do would be to try and start it and show you what it's doing. As you can see, it started but only ran for a short time and immediately stopped, which seems to be worse than what they had described. Now, the fact that it started and ran would mean that the choke flap on the carb is at least working and doing its job. But after that, the carb isn't able to supply any more gasoline to the engine. So it's pretty obvious, at least to me, that the carb is where the problem is at. So that means I'll just turn the fuel off to the carb and get to work taking it off the engine for an inspection. Of course, before I do any work, I'm going to give this mower a quick cleaning just so that I don't get any dirt in the areas that I don't want it to be at. Now, this doesn't mean a full cleaning and detailed job, just a spraying of degreaser and a rinsing. Now, for this one, I'm not going to go too far into cleaning it because I've already done it before and you don't need to go that far very often. And if you recall, I said that I worked on this mower before and that's the reason why I don't need to do a deep cleaning on it. So what's the history on this mower then? Well, if you've been watching my videos for any length of time, this mower should be very familiar to you. This mower was unfortunately not looked after like it should have been for quite a long time, but surprisingly, it survived its ordeal. However, it did suffer some damage during that time. And in the end, it was ran with low to no oil for a couple years and either the top end bearing or possibly even the connecting rod has been damaged. And what that means is that when this mower is running, it's making a lot of noise, a lot more than it's supposed to. Now, you don't have to wear hearing protection when using this mower, but I would recommend it if you don't want your hearing to be destroyed after using it. But not only that, both bearings for the clutch system were also locked up, forcing the governor to be modified to help overcome the drag from the bearings. And combine that with the oil situation, and you had a recipe for a really bad day, but luckily we caught it just in time to at least save the mower. The first thing that I want to do is to drain the gasoline from the car bowl and see if there was any water in it. And if you didn't know, draining the fuel from your bowl is one of the best ways to keep your car from getting destroyed by gasoline during long-term storage. And after looking at the gasoline in the pan, I didn't see any water that came out of the bowl. However, some water did drip from the carb after the washing. So I'm fairly confident that the problem is not related to the gasoline in the fuel system itself, but instead an issue with the carb. Now, as much as I admire Honda mowers, I really hate the way the carb and the airbox are installed onto the engine. But at the same time, I gladly take this design over something that was easy to work on and yet was made completely out of plastic because that company was trying to make as much money as possible by going cheap. And after wrestling the last of the linkages off the carb, we can finally get a good look at this beautiful carb because what I'm about to do to it will utterly destroy how good it looks. 
It's very unfortunate, but at the time of this filming, I was still trying out new solvents and cleaners to use in my ultrasonic cleaner. And my choice of cleaner to use would turn out to be not the best idea, and you'll see why here in a bit. Now when I was taking the bowl off the carb, I was expecting to see a lot of trash at the bottom, but instead, it looked pretty good. Now there was a small amount of debris at the bottom of the bowl, but it's not enough to cause the type of issues we're seeing on this engine. So the next step is to take the carb apart and put it into a plastic bag full of cleaner. So what's up with the bag then? Well the basin for this cleaner is really large and I didn't have a half gallon of cleaner so the bag will help to submerge the parts in what little cleaner I have left. I will let you know that this method led to a very unintentional bad ending for this carb and I need to be more careful in the future. This will hopefully help you to not make the same mistake that I made. Once all the parts are in the bag, I'll then place it into the water which is already hot to begin with. Now, I probably did not need to put the float into the bag, but what's it going to hurt? After having this method fail me, I've since gotten rid of the bag and instead adopted a glass jar and no metal basket. Now, the ultrasonic cleaner is what I would call the lazy way of cleaning a carb, but it does afford me the time to work on a different part of the machine while it does its job. I'll just turn it on and then let it run for about 10 minutes the first round and then give it a break before starting a second round. So this large gasket and the insulator fell off the engine when I took the carb off, so I want to figure out which way they go back on before I make a mistake. And after looking at it for about a minute or two and using some reason and logic, I was able to figure out the orientation of the parts. But I soon ran into a problem that might be the cause of our issues. And if you look closely, the gasket that faces the engine on the insulator is in fact broken. I know this break in the gasket doesn't look all that bad, but this is enough to cause a serious leak when talking about a small carb. So before we put everything back onto the engine, we'll have to get a new gasket or better yet, we can deal with it another way that won't keep us waiting for it to arrive in the mail. Now checking on the parts in the ultrasonic, it looks like it's doing a great job. However, I am worried about running out of daylight and you're going to see what happens after that. So the next item I need to take care of is to figure out which way this insulator goes back onto the engine because if I do it wrong, I'm going to have some serious issues. Now to make it a little easier, I want to put a line across the middle of the opening and you're going to notice that the openings for the bolts are just below that line. This is of course very important because the insulator needs to go on the same way otherwise you could have a very serious intake leak. And when looking at the insulator, you'll see that the openings for the bolts need to be below the midline as well which means it goes on the engine like this. So here's where everything went wrong with the carb situation. Now this is the next day and I did pour out the cleaner from the bag the night before but I left the parts in there overnight. The problem was that I didn't rinse the bag with clean water after dumping out the cleaner which left parts covered in residue and unfortunately it kind of ruined the finish on the metal. Now I don't think it's damaged the carb in any way that it's not going to work but it just looks really bad now. The other lesson I learned is that I don't think I'm going to use this cleaner again because of what it can do over a 24 hour period. Now after getting the parts out of the bag, I'll then start to do what I can only call unnecessary work because I really don't think I need to do this detail work after having been in the cleaner. However, I also don't want to do this process again if the carb should have an issue once I get it back on the engine. Now I can understand that I need to rinse the carb off after it's been in a solvent bath, but having to go through and clear all these tiny openings seems a bit unneeded if you ask me. But from what I can tell, it's just a necessary evil even when using harsh chemicals in the ultrasonic cleaner. So this is when I find something truly unnerving. This is the passage for the pilot jet and for some reason there seems to be quite a bit of grass clippings in this area. I have never seen anything like this in the last decade of doing this kind of work and I'm very certain that this has to be part of the issue with why this engine is not wanting to stay running. Now I wasn't able to get my needle nose pliers in the opening so I'll have to try to use anything that's going to fit to try and clear this opening. Now after clearing it I'll then make sure that the pilot jet opening is clear by using a tiny wire or using some carb cleaner and some compressed air. Once I'm sure that the jet is clear I'll then start to put the carb back together and hopefully the cleaner was able to do its job that it was advertised to do. Now my typical recommendation is to just save your precious time while doing the repair and just replace the carb with an aftermarket one. Then if you really want to, when you have free time while not on a job, you can take that carb apart and use the cleaner and get that carb ready for the next project. And if you use this method enough times, you'll have several carbs ready to be swapped in on a next project and you won't have to order a new aftermarket carb ever again unless you start getting carbs that you just can't repair. It's unfortunate, but I haven't had this cleaner for very long and I haven't had any free time to do any off-the-job carb cleanings, but when I do, I would certainly let you know about it. 
at least that's the plan I have for this cleaner, which may not be what you're using yours for, but I really don't see a difference between using it during a job and off the job. I will let you know that I had to keep this mower for a bit longer than expected due to scheduling and I kind of forgot about it. But once I had this mower ready to hand back to the owners, I got another look at the carb and its rough exterior condition and I promise you it looked even worse later on so no I don't plan on using this particular cleaner again. Now for the gasket that was broken on the insulator, I'm planning on making my own out of gasket paper that you can get at any auto parts store. The paper is nothing more than extremely dense cardboard, so using a cereal box or any box that goes into a freezer should work as well. I'm just going to trace the overall shape of the insulator onto the paper and then start punching out the openings using a hole punch. Now you can do it however you like, whether that's using a stamping method or even using spray paint to help outline the shape. For me, I'm just used to this method and I like it, but if I had more time, I'd probably use spray paint to help out, but cleaning the part afterwards can be a real pain. Now for anyone that might be doing this for the first time, I'd recommend using the spray paint, but for someone else with more experience, outlining works just as well. Now the stamping method works, but it can get pretty messy depending upon what kind of fluid you use to help make your stamp, whether that's oil, grease, or even water. Now the outer part of the pattern doesn't have to be perfect, in fact it can be a rectangle if you want it to be, I'll just get it as close as possible and call it good. Now the opening in the middle is supposed to be a square shape, however the way we had to trace it we ended up with a circle. So to make it a square shape I'll just rough in some marks so that we can trace it out and make a box out of it and then cut it out with my hobby knife. Now going back to the ultrasonic cleaner, I do plan on using it more and improving on my methods and techniques until the day the cleaner stops working. And the reason why is because I like the idea of getting the most for my money even for a purchase that I've kind of been regretting. Once the carb is back together, I'll then start the tedious job of connecting all the linkages and then trying to stab everything back together onto the engine. Now to be honest, the first time I ever tried to stab the bolts back through all the parts, I missed and left a gasket hanging, but after doing it several dozen times, it's really not as bad as getting a mortgage with a mediocre credit score. Unfortunately, this video is turning out to be a lot longer than I was expecting, and due to time constraints, this is where we have to leave the project. But when we come back, we'll pick up right here after a brief recap and you'll get to see if the carb cleaning and a new homemade gasket fixes his mower or if we have to go a little further into the engine. Now hopefully I didn't just jinx myself because then again, my luck with this kind of stuff isn't always the best. So my question is, do you think all the issues I discovered on this carb would be enough to cause our issues or do you think the problem might be somewhere else? Thank you for watching. I really do appreciate your time here. Please feel free to ask me any questions about this project or about your own projects, and I hope to see you in the next video.